So we have our load balancer up and running here. What I wanna do next is to set up an SSL certificate on our load balancer server here so that we can encrypt traffic to our application or that is traffic to the load balancer. And to do that, we're gonna set up SSL termination, which just means the load balancer terminates the SSL connection, which just means that it's the server that decrypts the SSL connection and ends it. And then when it communicates to the application servers, it's communicating over port 80, not over the SSL certificate, which is generally okay because it's all within the private network. So the chance of that traffic getting intercepted is really low because you basically have to be inside of the data center or have some kind of central access to the servers themselves inside of the same network, in which case you kind of have bigger issues. All right, so let's head on over to our load balancer server, and we're actually gonna do something a little bit annoying. We have to edit the configuration for Nginx a little bit, because what this is gonna do is receive a request on port 80 and try to proxy it to our other servers but we're gonna use Let's Encrypt to install the SSL certificate. Let's Encrypt uses a mechanism where it needs to ping your server at this host name, at the host name you set, in order to create the SSL certificates. And it does that because it uses that as a confirmation step to say that you actually own that domain and control it. So temporarily, we are gonna bring back a few things here. First, we're gonna do location backslash, we'll say try files, URI, URI slash, otherwise give a 404. And we need a web root, so we'll say the root is var www.html. And this location block we are gonna get rid of or not going to proxy to um, anything just yet. And we're just gonna keep a standard configuration here. Let's save and quit that. We'll head to var www html and we'll do sudo vim index.html and we'll say default page sudo nginx-t so test the configuration we'll reload nginx and let's head back to our load balancer here and hopefully we see default page we do great so we're just about ready to get an ssl installed here i'm going to head to slash opt which is where i like to install certbot let's encrypt and we can get started so i'm going to do sudo git clone and we can get clone the certbot certbot repository that'll just create a directory named certbot in here. We can cd into certbot and see that we have all the let's encrypt stuff. And we can test out certbot auto with the dash h for help command and see that we have it up and running here. This command will work. So I have a video that covers the intricacies of using Let's Encrypt. I just want to cover installing an SSL certificate quickly. So we'll just paste in the command. We are using sudo, calling certbot auto, cert only to give us the certificate only use the web root method of authenticating us. Our web root is with a dash w flag, varwwhtml. We're gonna do this for the domain lb.serviceforhackers.com and I wanna make it non-interactive and I do agree to the terms of service and email to let me know when this is going to expire. It's gonna be just my chris at serviceforhackers.com email. So let's see if this works. All right, and this finished and we can see that it worked. Now, if this doesn't work for you, you might get errors. Um, often people's Nginx configuration has protection against things like accessing directories with starting with a period, which is what this does. If you head to, let's see, site servers for hackers.com and we're gonna search for let's encrypt and I'll just grab the first one here. A lot of people's Nginx configurations have something like this, which denies access to any directory or file beginning with a period. So what you have to do is authorize the well-known directory that begins with a period for a web traffic inside of your Nginx configuration. Now, sometimes if you use something like H5BPs, that's HTML5 boilerplates, Nginx configuration, it has this hidden somewhere in the config, so watch out for that if you do. And in fact, I have an update here that says I had to use this full path before to make that work. But never mind that, this worked for us, so we have a certificate. That certificate is located in, let's see, Etsy, let's encrypt live lbservers.com fullchain.pem. So let me copy and paste that. Actually, let's copy and paste the directory. We'll head inside of there. And let's see, am I going to become user root? And we'll head inside of there. And we see we have cert pen, chain pem, full chain, private key. I need the full chain file and I need the private key file. And notice that these are symlinks because the symlinks just get updated whenever we renew our certificate through Let's Encrypt. So the file path is the Etsy Let's Encrypt live LB service to servicehackers.com and I want fullchain.pem and privatekey.pem. And I'll exit out of this to become user Ubuntu again so we get our nice colors and we can edit our Etsy Nginx sites available default file again and we can set this up. Now I need to get rid of the changes here. Oh, actually you might want to keep these changes and the reason why you might want to keep those is because you'll end up having to renew your Let's Encrypt certificate here. So what I'm going to do here is actually say we have a web root var and the location beginning with well known will work here and that'll do the trifiles and all that good stuff. 
but everything else should get proxied off to another server. And those other servers, of course, are application servers that have Laravel installed on it. So we'll bring back this location block to do the proxy params. We'll keep the location that begins with well-known. So this location block syntax says anything that begins with well-known and anything after it. So this doesn't have to be specifically well-known. If this had the equal signs here, then this would only match URIs of dot well-known. But since we don't have that, it matches the directory dot well-known and anything after it, which will work for let's encrypt. And the last thing I'm gonna do here is copy this, delete it, and I only want that rev route to be used for location dot well-known. So let me just make sure I didn't break anything. sudo nginx-t, that says it's good. sudo service nginx reload. Let's head back here. And we see it's, we're back to our app servers. And if we do dot well known, I might get uh, access denied here. That makes sense because this directory either no longer exists because certbot destroys it. If it did exist and certbot actually uh, does a full path here, it'll have not just this directory, but also the full path to the file it needs and is actually checking for. That should successfully be received when Let's Encrypt does it to verify that the server is still there and exist. And we still have our load balancer here working. So let's go back here and we need to finish editing our configuration file to work with an SSL certificate. So underneath upstream here, although the order doesn't matter, I'm gonna add another server block. We're gonna say this one is listing on port 80 and this is the port 80 default server. So we're actually gonna to need to delete this down here. And then we're gonna say the server name is lbserviceforhackers.com. And we're gonna say, if this request is listening on port 80, received on Nginx on port 80, that means it's not an SSL request. Therefore, return a 301, so redirect it to HTTPS and send the server name and the request URI, which includes the query parameters. So if it's not a request under HTTP, it's gonna redirect us to it. Now down here, we need to say, we're gonna listen on port 443. This is for SSL connections, and this will be the default server setup for any port 443 connection to the server. And then I'm gonna copy and paste a bunch of boilerplate that is good for SSL certificates, and it's a lot of stuff. So we're gonna say only use these more secure TLS protocols for SSL. We no longer use any of the SSL protocols, we use TLS for various security reasons. Use these ciphers, which are both more secure. Prefer the ciphers, uh, add a session cache, SSL timeout, keep a live timeout. These are all grabbed from H5BP, Nginx server configurations, which are the fault that I typically use for, for Nginx. So you can find them here in, let's see, I believe H5BP and directive only. I mean, we have the SSL and SSL stapling. SSL is where I took these from, and they have all these good things you might wanna to add to your SSL configuration. Okay, so we did everything but define the actual SSL certificates. Let's do that now. So like I pointed out, we wanted the fullchain.pem for the SSL certificate, the private key.pem for the certificate key, and that should be it. Save and quit that. We'll do sudo nginx-t and it's successful. So let's do sudo service nginx reload and let's see if we broke everything or not. Okay, we didn't and now we got redirected. So we have a lock here, we are HTTPS. We are good to go, show certificate. Let's Encrypt Authority expires in, well, I think 90 days is the typical one, and it's valid and trusted. So we are all good. We have a load balancer that is terminating SSL connections for us and then sending requests off over the private network to our two application servers that are at these private IP addresses. All right, so we're good for now. In the next video, I'm going to cover what we need to change in our application to make sure everything is working there.